Hey guys, I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood colorist, and in this video, we are looking at my Visionary Power Grades version 2.1. So this is an upgrade to my previous version of Power Grades, which I called the Pro Note 3 template. And in this one, we have three different versions of the Note Trees, so that you can pick and choose whichever one that suits your workflow the best. And I feel that this is necessary for all my tutorials down the line so that you have a structured workflow that you can really work in and you can use this note tree for all your own grades so that we can work faster and create the looks that we want to make. And I hate it when tutorials are using different note trees on each of their videos, even my own. That's why I feel that this is a necessary move to standardize all of my note trees in this channel at least so that you can have a very structured learning process. So you can either buy this note tree from the link in the description for a fast and easy solution or you can follow along this video because I'm going to break down each and every note and also compound note so that you know what's happening in it and you can make it for yourself. So let's get into the video. All right, so I have my clip here and my power grades all loaded up in my power grade album. If you're not sure what a power grade album is compared to a still album, the power grade album will appear in all of your future projects and also past projects. The still album will only appear in your current project. So if you put your note tree templates in your power grade album, then you can use it for all your future projects without having to copy it over from past projects. So to import these note trees, I just drag in the DRX files once you download it and we have a pro, advanced and also beginner note tree. So you can choose which note tree suits your workflow the best but for my tutorials I'll mostly be using the pro note tree to demonstrate all the notes that you can use very easily. So I developed these note trees to fit almost any use from commercials like this to filmic projects that you want to do like music videos or feature films. And it's very intuitive and it's very easy to use and it makes sense. That's the most important thing. So I'm going to show you an example using the Pro Note tree. Let's turn off our gallery to see what we're working with. And I'm going to go straight into the notes itself. So our color management is done on a clip basis, which is the CST over here. Let me open my color management settings for you to have a look. So I, all I'm doing is DaVinci White RGB without color managing. And my timeline color space, DaVinci White Gamut. And output color space, Rec 709A because I'm on Mac. If you're on a Windows, then you can switch this to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 right here. And once you're done with that, we also have to set our 3D lookup table to tetrahedral and go to the three dots up on top and set current settings as default preset. Then you can just leave it as it is for all your future projects. And like I said, I'm doing everything on a clip level. If you're interested in doing things in a group level or a timeline level, then you can do so by separating out the things that you need. But I'm trying to keep things simple so that beginners can also follow along my tutorials. So in this pro note tree, I have my first note, which is a CST in. And this is for Da Vinci White Gamut workflows. So that all these notes down the line are working in the Da Vinci White Gamut. If I open my effects tab and you see that it's going from Sony S Gamut 3 Cine into Da Vinci White Gamut Da Vinci Intermediate. But I found that Sony footage doesn't work quite well in Da Vinci White Gamut. The yellows are very suppressed and it turns to red. So it messes up with my footage, which is not something that I want. That's why when I'm working with Sony footage, I won't go into Da Vinci White Gamut. But for other footage like Ari Raw or Blackmagic Raw, I found that it works quite well in Da Vinci White Gamut. So all I'm doing in this first note is going from whatever log your camera is shooting in into DaVinci White Gamut. But in this case, this is footage from Sony, so I'm not using the DaVinci White Gamut workflow. And after that, I move on to my preservation note, which is my highlights. And in this note, I'm just qualifying using the luminance channel. And then I've set the highlights to negative 50 so that I get to preserve the highlights a little and it's not too blown out right from the start. And after that is two of my correction notes, which is my primaries. And I do everything in primaries like temperature, tint, contrast, leaf gamma gain, shadow, highlight, mid-tone, everything. Because I don't see the benefit of separating them out and I get to keep track of all my corrections in one note. So the only thing that I separated out is this HSV saturation. So how you do this is change your color space to HSV 
and then turn off channel 1 and 3 so that you're left with the S channel which is saturation and to increase saturation all you have to do is go into your gamma or your gain and push it up and this technique gives a more filmic saturation so it's more deeper and richer instead of a very digital poppy kind of saturation so that's the only note that i separated it out because i have to switch the color space and after that i have two more parallel notes which are my post correction notes as you can say so there's a skin and also hue so skin is where i pre-selected out her skin so if i turn on my highlight mode i can see that there's a selection of the skin so that i don't have to requalify her skin in each clip so all i'm doing here is actually just reducing the mid-tone detail i'm not doing much to the color so the qualifying can be a little bit dirty you don't have to be too clean and after that i also have my hue here where i reduce the background hue which are blue or tealish and this is a kind of macro or general kind of adjustment that you can make to your image and that's before we go into our secondaries where we go in and tweak the little micro stuff and moving on to this stack of secondaries over here, I have a vignette which is an inverted power window so that I can select the outsides and darken it down. And after that, I have a relight L which is the left side and also a relight R which is the right side. And moving on, we have a focus node so that I can focus on the subject, whatever the subject is, and I can track it too to follow the subject and brighten up her face and below that is just an empty note because sometimes the client might want to select her lipstick and change the color that's why i left a little bit of space below this secondary so that you can add more parallel notes if you need to so let's remove them for now and moving on back to more macro adjustments i have my curves where i did some editable spline by turning on this function so that i can make a more cinematic curve I have a video on this if you're interested to go check that out. And below that is a global note where I can make very wide adjustments maybe to the temperature or to the tint. And in this case, I just want to soften everything out. That's why I reduce the mid-tone details a little bit in this global note. So this is useful if you don't want to go back into your primaries and do corrections because it might affect these notes over here. And after that, note number 17 is detail where I go into my blur and reduce it to sharpen it a little bit but i feel it's not necessary for this clip and moving on to two more parallel notes and this is where i start to create a look so i have a bleach bypass built in so check my video on bleach bypass if you're interested on creating this and also an empty look note where i can do the look manually so after my two look notes i'm going into my cst out where i have sony s log 3 into rec 709 gamma 2.4 where i normalize this into a display color space and after the cst out it's just an empty note for placeholder and after that i'm continuing with my look creation with two notes that works better in rec 709 this one is for creative LUTs, so i'm using my visionary lucid color LUTs right now which is the visionary LUTs high key and it's doing quite a nice effect in cooling down the image and also giving it a little bit of pop so the other thing is a Kodak 2383 film print emulation and what's inside is a Cineon transform and a Kodak LUT and also an adjustment to bump down the shadows a little bit because I feel that the shadows are a bit lifted in the original Kodak LUT. And finally, we finish it off with a noise reduction if needed and also other effects that you want to slap onto the footage like halation, film grain or I also use Dehancer right at the end so that I can better control how much of film grain or how much of halation that I want to put into the image. So this is for the Pro Note 3 and there are two other Note trees that you can use which are with the same principles just that it has less notes and it's the Advanced which is this so it's basically the same principle just less notes so it's less complicated if you choose to use it and there's also a beginner so the results are more or less the same just a little bit difference to the secondaries where i have more real light notes in case i have to use it 
So in the beginner node, it's very simplified, a primary skin, and then a CST out, and also a creative LUT, and that's all. So if you feel that the beginner node tree is more suited for your workflow, it works faster for you, then go ahead and use it. Because even if you use the beginner or advanced node tree, you can still follow along my tutorials when I'm using the pro node tree. You might need to add a node or two, but like I said, it's still very convenient. So I hope that by giving you this node tree, we can go one step further into our color grading journey so that we have more structure to achieve the looks that we want to achieve. And if you want to get a node tree and support the channel, you can do so with the link in the description. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.